This right here is a little bit salt bay, okay? But um, you know, seasoning. Who doesn't love seasoning? It's dark because of sin, and it light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillar that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome back to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew. But my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share that link. Welcome. This is my Rolling the Stones, Daddy Issues episode of The Wireless Woman. And if you hadn't figured this out by now, if I ain't gonna do nothing else, I'm gonna lure you in with a title that sounds like I'm about to talk about one thing when I'm actually gonna talk about something else. So there's no way that I could do an episode about my baby mamas and I circle back for these baby daddies. That's just my baby daddy. And this is just your episode. So I need all of those baby daddies to the front of the class. Now y'all sitting in a semicircle, crisscross applesauce, because it is time to read aloud. All right, welcome back to my old school Wi-Fi's and Welcome in to my new school. And as you can see from my message board in the back, we're going to be doing some work today. I even wore my old lady gang glasses. Unfortunately, when your lenses are this thick, you're going to get some glare. But I did try to clean them up real good for y'all. So at least if nothing else, you don't have to see what I ate today. I'm also wearing my Wi-Fi Sigma shirt, and I got an interesting story about this shirt. So when I first designed this shirt for my merch line, and don't worry, you'll be able to order some merch soon. I, as soon as I get my website up, just be patient with me. Good things, good things come to those who wait. I actually designed it as Wi-Fi Sigma, you know, like a university, like a sorority, something you could be inducted to. As I started to wear it out and around, people kept saying, I like your wife shirt, girl, go wife. You know, it, people kept calling it wife. And I was like, hmm, isn't that ironic? Especially because I am a two-time all-star wife champion. Yeah, I don't care what y'all say. I'm great at wifing. Me and, me and wifing, we do this, okay? And I'm hoping, though, that I can on this channel really begin to inspire, instruct, and raise a generation of women that are ready to be really great wives. Because wifing is, like, wifing is a sport. 
Wifing is an art. It's an art form. And ladies, we can't wait until marriage to be a wife. See, it's a man who finds a wife. You have to be a wife when he finds you in order to be found. If you want to be found by husbands, you have to be out wifing, just like Ruth, just like Esther. You got to already be walking in that calling in order to answer it. So, I mean, that's a little tidbit of advice that I have. And ladies, look, you can't get picked up by your husband hanging out with your boyfriend. So, wife season. Before we get into the content, go ahead and do me a favor and like this video on the way in or dislike it. I mean, if you like it, I love it. But if you dislike it, I can work with that too. Just go ahead and engage with me. And that's what this comment section is for. Like I say, let these comments reveal how you really feel. So by all means, have at it. While I am twice a wife, I am also somebody's baby mama. And I can remember when I first began to date my youngest son's father, that there were those baby mama issues there. And he talked to me ad nauseum about wanting to be in a household with his children. And of course, in hindsight, where it's all 2020, where I don't need these thick ass lenses, that was probably red flags definitely red flags. But I remember telling him at that time, you will never have a great relationship with your children if you don't have a great relationship with their mom. You know, we deal a lot with the consequences and the fallout of the absent parent situation in the black community, but it really is a breakdown of the relationship. It really is a lack of cooperation and all of it stems from the same place. And while there are lots and lots of beautiful intact black families, we would be remiss and ill-equipped to actually fix the issues and problems in our community if we're not honest about the problem. If we're not honest about what's going on in our community, where the roots lie, we're never going to rebuild infrastructure. The same problems that we have within our interpersonal relationships, we have within our friendships, we have within our businesses, just an inability to actually cooperate with each other. And all of these things stem from the same place. So in this episode, we are going to examine the origins of why we see so much breakdown in our interpersonal relationships, as well as begin to have some discussions about things I think are a good place to start in solving the problem. If you haven't figured out by now, we don't have to agree on the methods. We do have to agree on the issues and the problems. We can't keep complaining about them on social media platforms. We have to actually take time and see if we can dissect some of these forces that are at work in our community and really begin to turn the tide you know, as a zennial, a Gen X millennial, a geriatric millennial, a milestone millennial, whatever you call us people that's 40, give or take, we're finally the elders. And I've seen a phenomenon in this millennial generation that I never saw with boomers or Gen Xers. We're like the first generation of elders to be taking our cues for where we are in our life, what we should be doing from the younger generation. I meet so many people who say, yeah, I got an iPhone because my kids had an iPhone and I wanted to be able to communicate with them. Yeah, I got on TikTok because I was doing TikToks with my kids. Like, there's nothing wrong with bridging gaps that got missed by the generations that came before us. But when it becomes about wisdom and how we begin to shine that light for the children that are coming behind us, when it comes to footprints in the sand that leave a path forward for our children, those footprints can't be going in a circle. I see a lot of millennials that are trying to reclaim their youth 
and it's gone, baby. It's it's gone like that hairline and that waistline. It's, it's gone like the lines of your life. And it's time for us to put our Peter Pan Neverland Ranch fantasies up in the closet and actually raise children and actually sustain families, build a village. You know, who is the owner of Coke? Who is the owner of Pepsi? Who is the owner of Apple? Who is the owner of Disney? Like when we think about the companies that have been enduring, that have continued through depressions and recessions, industries. I was watching an industry meeting today and it's the whitest thing I've seen since a loaf of Wonder Bread. They're having a conversation about voting rights being for everybody. And guess who wasn't a part of the panel? It was like eight people on a panel and one black person. Where, where is the black delegation? Where is the black delegation of the 1970s and 60s? When we had black leadership that did not speak for black people to white people, they spoke for black people with black people because the whole point of equality was for us to come to the table with our own not come to the table and beg for some from them hmm i digress so we're talking about baby daddies and the fundamental issue at the center of the discussion is the relationship between black men and black women because long before black men and women become black fathers and black mothers they're black lovers Torn between two lovers. origin story where did the black fatherlessness start of course it can be argued slavery where you had black Y'all black. I know everybody want to be African-American, but some of these blacks are indigenous peoples of this particular continent. Some of us were actually already here. And as I always say, black people in America are something intrinsically, genetically, emotionally, spiritually different than those who belong to the continent of Africa. We have been intermixed, intermarried, interbred in ways that people who are born free have never experienced, which I would beg to debate if any black person in the world really is free, especially when you consider all the colonization and globalization of white supremacy. But again, I continue to digress. Others will point a finger to legislation and welfare that kicked the black man out of the home, whatever it was. We have these things genetically engineered into our DNA and into our strain, this freedom, really, this ability to actually get up and leave is something that's been denied to us for a long time as people. So I can understand wanting to embrace all of that freedom and individuality that has been denied to us for so long. However, being able to marry is something that was illegal for black people for a long time. You know, there were many, many black slave women that had to share their men with the other women on the plantations because he was a buck. He wasn't, he, he couldn't be considered to belong to that one woman. Likewise, black women were made to be with the masters. You know, a, a black man could not rest in the trust of being able to have his woman to himself. He didn't have the ability to provide or to protect that was stripped from him from the master. And there were times where he'd have to see the master cart his woman right on off. So us being able to have monogamous relationships, I find it to be so weird that so many black men reject marriage and monogamy with black men and say, oh, these are European standards and this isn't the African way. Well, 
haven't we been marching for equality with them all this time? I mean, you want their women, you want their cars, you want their lifestyle in every other respect other than having a monogamous, long-standing, general wealth building, legacy building marriage. Did you ever think the things that make us different from other cultures might be the things that are crippling our progress? Being able to be a black man that has a black wife is luxury. That's your luxury. That's sticking it to the man. On oh God, on oh God, my nigga, that's luxury. I mean, you get to freely pick from women that at one point in time were more valuable of a commodity than your car. It cost more, was worth more to procure. Listen, you think the submission of the black woman was free, was cheap. It's very expensive. Sometimes it was paid for in blood. A lot of people had to die to quell insurrections and rebellions that we now know were more prevalent than we were taught. We now know in history that slave uprisings and revolts were more commonplace than not. So yeah, they were, they were paying a hefty price to get and keep some black women. I just think we're looking at this all wrong. And to actually be a black man under a roof of your own black woman, helping to rear and raise your children is something that's been denied from you for so long. And now when you have the ability to choose whether to stay or to go, this is the state that we're in. And the saddest part about it is this is who they said you would be if they gave you freedom. This was what they said you would do to your own community. And I gotta be honest with you. These children think y'all are gods. These children do what you say and what you show them. Because let's be honest, how many men have become the very father they said they would never be? And I know it was her fault. I know. I know she did it. I know you couldn't make it work. Well, I get it. I understand. I do. How could I not? I myself am a baby mama. And me and my baby daddy will get back together when they start serving snow cones in hell. Here's the thing. You're doing what you saw done. The majority of us, black males and black females alike, have grown up with fatherlessness. Before my cousins run off and start talking about me with the rest of my family, I don't care. Um, it's my experience. My experience that I've had defines me. And it's valid, regardless of whether it's popular. It took my father dying for me to recognize how alone I had been even in his living. You know, he left very little to me and even less to my children. And not just by way of resources, but by way of memories. You know, in my therapy session, I talked to my counselor and I told him, you know, in I don't even feel sad. I feel empty when I think about my dad. I think back on the places in my life where he should be and he's not there. I don't feel sad. I feel empty, you know? And for me, the grieving process was so much more about plugging an empty hole than mourning a loss. And when I have these conversations with men, especially those that are hypersexual, 
you're trying to plug an empty hole. And the only way to plug an empty hole is to fill it. And filling someone else's empty hole doesn't fill your own. You have to fill your own empty hole with purpose. You know, with purpose. And I, and I think... I think a lot of black men are watching black women do that right now. I was watching the news today and they had Stacey Abrams and Tish James. I mean, all over the headlines. Like every time I looked up, it was, I was like, oh, oh, okay. We're opening new businesses at the highest rate of any other racial or gender group in the country, which I mean, you only got two gender groups, but you, you understood my point. My point is... Black women have been holding down so much responsibility. See, when you deal with a single parent household, oftentimes the boys are coddled and protected. There, there are a lot of excuses made for them. But the girls, we got to work. You're going to be put out when you get 18. And we don't have the balance of a father in the household making us feel safe, comfortable, providing for us financially so that we can actually rest in femininity. We're working, we're cooking, we're taking care of younger siblings. We're trying to keep our grades together so that we can go to college because we're out here on our own. I remember the type of decisions that I had to make as a young woman in college, knowing that I couldn't come back to my home, knowing what the dynamic was between my mom. And there are some men like literally in my own family right now, men live with my mom. And if I ask my mom to stay, baby, maybe two weeks, maybe two weeks. So we understood the assignment. Black women understood the assignment. You can't go home. And it's men 40, 50 years old with kids living at home with moms. So you felt a different type of parenting than black women have. You felt a different type of nurturing. So much so to the point that a lot of black men are abandoning the desire for a black woman because it feels so closely tied to the relationship between them and their mother. Y'all say it's about desirability, but the truth of the matter is it's not. It's about the fact that a black woman is more than likely going to come across with the same masculine energy as your mama. You don't like it, but it's true. The women that you're meeting are in the I don't need a man energy that you were raised up under. The same energy that made you feel insignificant, that made you feel like you could not thrive for yourself that smothering energy from your mother. And as a side note, women, we need to pay attention to that because when we are coddling, protecting, providing for and doing for these men, you allow him to what they call mother you. And Freud talks about it. Like when you really, really study psychology and you start to deal with the black male pathology, you'll start to see that it's hard for a man to be sexually attracted to a woman that he has put in the place of his mother. If as a black woman, you're going to have desirability for a black man. I mean, they say it to us like this. White women are more attractive than y'all. They're submissive. They're, that's not what they mean. What they mean is they're not our moms. I mean, they've chalked it up to being a race thing because of the part that white supremacy plays in keeping our community decimated. They don't know they've been programmed to be Smiths and Sentinels tearing down their own community. And I'm not going to say whether they should or shouldn't. No, I'm not going to assign blame here. I had a lot of men check off of my video last night because I was talking about black men and, you know, I'm sorry. I'm trying to help get us all the way together and everybody's got to bring their perspectives and preferences and all this stuff to the conversation and, and really begin to share our honest experience and perspectives in order for us to have the right discussion. I'm not going to pamper 
no grown ass man. And I'm sorry if it feels masculine when I say that, but the most feminine thing that I can do is choose, is express how I really feel, is give you the opportunity to respond to me, to respond to the needs and the issues and the problems that we bring those actually to you and make you responsible for handling those things. That is divine femininity. Because trust me, after you fail to provide the things that you have promised to women of other races like you did to us, they're going to move right into that same masculine energy with you. And I know I just said a whole mouthful to these men. But ladies, we have been searching for our fathers in these men and we're pulling in the same energy. You know, we're, we're still dealing with the same abandonment issues as a grown woman that we had as girls. It's the weirdest thing. It's a dichotomy because black men will say that it's black women raising black men to be effeminate and then turn around and be the same ones to say that black women are moving in a masculinity. So this right here is a little bit salt bay, okay? But, um, you know, seasoning. Who doesn't love seasoning? It's a preservative. Listening to the words of my mouth, even if they are a little salty, will save your life if you really take time to hear where I'm coming from. But here's the thing. If most men would have watched their moms and did what they saw her do, instead of what they saw their dads do, maybe they would be moving in more masculine energy. Maybe, maybe it wouldn't be such a competition over the feminine energy, over who gets the rest. You know, if these men were working like their moms did, working like I do, Like I said, this isn't everybody. There are great, great black men out there, but great black men, don't y'all want some help? Aren't y'all tired of being lumped in with a group of men that, that's softer than cotton candy? That's softer than the little Charmin bears? Like, I'm, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help Ike. Trying to help Ike, all right. I'm trying to help Ike. At a certain point, we got to tell the truth. We got to have a conversation with each other. I don't want to sit in rooms with white people trying to get equal rights with them when we don't even have the infrastructure. We don't even have a community to sit down at the table with these people and strike a fair deal every time we get this short end of the stick because we shortchange our own people. Because we're putting out a mediocre product, there used to be a time where black owned meant superior ingenuity and service they're saying the real mccoy that was coined after a black man's product we're more excellent than the arguments that we're having right now and it's because the arguments are facetious fallacious fastidious we are overly concerned with details that don't matter And if we're really going to love a black woman from infinity to infinity, love a black man from infinity to infinity, shout out to Queen Latifah. Black Rain was a masterpiece. I mean, Queen Latifah had other albums, don't get me wrong, but listen to it. If you hadn't listened to Black Rain lately, pull it out. You'll be like, whoa, it ages well. I'm saying all of this to say that if we're going to raise these children, women and children are my primary concern, black women and black children. It's not to say that black men, we don't care about you. It's terrible. It's, we just can't get you all together. That's what you asked us not to do anymore. You asked us not to be in our masculine energy. So, okay. All I can do is bring that petition to you and ask you all to do what you see us doing, which is deal with these daddy issues. It is the lack of the pursuit of purpose that keeps you from being able to fully grab hold of your community 
we as black women don't have that luxury because we have to take care of the children that you walk out on, that you leave, that you're put out from, that you're kept from seeing, whatever it is. We still have to be the primary custodian and caretaker of these children, of the elderly, of our parents, of each other sometimes. That's the only reason why you see all these women out here getting degrees and fighting for voting rights and marching when a black man gets shot because we got purpose. It, purpose and the pursuit of purpose. The pursuit of purpose. Even if you can't attain it in this lifetime, your destiny, your legacy, what you leave after you, it is is the thing that will fill up that empty hole. It is the thing that will give you what no one else can. You know, you know, when my father died, I was left without a community. His friends, the people that knew him best, my father's closest friends, people that Knew him for 40, 50 years. Had no idea who I was. I have been asked so many times, how did I know my dad? You know, and I guess his embarrassment at being made a father when he didn't want to be one caused him not to think about legacy and destiny. Like in that line when they said, and when he died, all he left me was alone. I didn't get one card, one bouquet, one courtesy call from my dad's pastor. From his, I mean, don't get me wrong. My father's family has been amazing to me. It's hard to even sit here and say this because I know some of them are going to be hurt and disappointed by it. But my children saw what my father was to me and subsequently to them. Like it's all tied in together, you know, to my dad's dying day almost, he was trying to explain to me how him not being in my life was my mother's fault. Despite the fact that I was a 40 year old grown ass woman with kids of my own, whose life he also had not participated in. Despite being able to see the cycle play out for two generations, I was still getting the same excuse. Catch that shit up. Work that shit out. Every time I talk to a black man about his mental health, about dealing with his demons, you do man, who do the black men talk to? I mean, y'all will literally not be willing to go to a therapist because you don't want to tell nobody your business, but then we'll get on social media and say that black men don't have nobody to talk to. Like your woman is not your therapist. She's not your mom love in a marriage and in a relationship is not unconditional. The only person, the only people who can love you unconditionally are your parents. And I say this all the time, get your own inner child out and play with him. Give him what he need and stop looking for somebody else out in the world to plug that hole. You know, I could insert a message right here about where the homosexuality in the black community is coming from, but I won't, not today. Not today. But yeah, plug that hole with something. With some purpose. Instead of trying to reach out for a dad. Instead of hating the... I mean, we have been dealing with this since... Just within our own millennial generation. We have been dealing with this. Tupac said, do we hate our women? Do we hate our women? To quote... The late prophet Tupac, who says, You know it makes me unhappy when brothers make babies and leave a young mother to be a pappy. And since we all came from a woman, got our name from a woman, and our game from a woman, I wonder why we take from our women why we rape our women. Do we hate our women? Do we hate them? I think it's time to kill for our women. Time to heal our women. 
be real to our women. And if we don't, see, here's where we go. Here, here's where we're going. And if we don't, we'll have a race of babies that will hate the ladies who make the babies. Now, it, this is prophecy right here. This is, this is prophetic. What year is this? 1993. 1993, I hadn't even graduated from high school. And he called it. I'm talking to daddies about daddies. We're dealing with the same disease. But we as women, we did at least, if nothing else, have women to model ourselves after. Now, you may not like what we've become. You may not like how masculine we are. You can... You can be upset about it, but you cannot blame us for it. We are being remade in the image of the women that raised us. And this is me being Salt Bay again. But if you're mad, be mad, be mad at your mama. Not me. You're going to have to start where you are. This video goes back to my BAM challenge video. Just be present somewhere where women and children are cut the game off and go connect with some women and children give them some rest you know just take a single mom that you know and hey i got the kids for the night go out with your girls there are some men who are predators out here i get it you cannot leave your kids around with just anybody but we got to start building community somewhere we got to take some chances to trust some people I mean, listen, you know who you can't trust. We, we done learned all the red flags by now. We should have it. But being wives, husbands, mothers, fathers takes practice. It's hard to be something you've never seen. Some of us are trying to make marriages and relationships work when we've never seen it. <laughs> when our role models, our idols are unmarried people divorced people you know people tell me all the time how unsuccessful I am as a woman because I've been divorced twice but nothing ventured nothing gained you know and the one thing I can say is that practicing the art of wifing it's made me so much better at it it's made me so much more hopeful for the type of wife and mother that I can be because I've seen it now you know no one says that the business owners no one says that when your business goes under a hey, you should never try to run a business again well yeah people do say stuff like that but my point is if every time you come back to it you're better than you were before you don't lose you learn you know and I will absolutely be a wife again I told my ex-husbands that, and so far I've been right. <laughs> I'm two and oh, oh, this, this. I mean, I win them, I lose them. I win some and I lose some, but I win some. And that's the point. You know, we're going to have to keep trying. We can't build all these walls within our community when we desperately need each other. You know, and this is a redemptive video. I'm sure tons of people done clicked off by now, but black men, you can try again. You can try and fail. I'm just asking you not to give up, not to give up on your people and your race. If you want a white woman, go get you one, but come back and take care of the children and the women that are here too. Also give these women all the rest that you wish your mom could have had. Remember who you are and where you come from and why you're here. You're not just here to fuck bitches, drink Hennessy, and, and, and trick off on people. You're actually a part of a lineage and a destiny. And I know they don't want to tell you this, but you're going to have to deliver us. <laughs> deliver us from evil. From this evil system. I'm not going to beg you. I ain't going to hold you. 
Because sometimes you can't hold on to the peace and the person. But I hear y'all talking so desperately about be his peace, be his peace, be his peace. Find some peace. Bring some back to your community. How about that? So just as much as I want to see black women win, I want to see black men win too. Not at the expense of their people. Not as capitalists. Not on the backs of their women. So I want you guys to be unplugged. Cut the game off. And be unbothered. Stop arguing and, and being catty with your women. It's feminine. And be unleashed. Unleash your potential. Be a man on fire. A man in action. The man you wanted to behold. The man you wanted to be held by. Protected by. Be the man you wish you had growing up. And I think we can turn all this around. I believe that. I believe that between the millennials being elders and the millennials becoming ancestors, we can turn this whole thing around. Everything that's been undone over the last 40 years. I, I think we can turn it around, honestly, in less than 10 years, if we're intentional about it. But as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. And make sure before you head out that you drop me a headphones emoji in the comments. And until next time, class is now dismissed. See you later.